message. Who gave John his message? God gave him his message. Now, I understand now, please, understand that when John started his ministry and when he baptized Jesus in 27 AD, there was seven years left on the Jewish nation's probation. That probation ended in 34 AD. So when John began to baptize and baptize Jesus in 27 AD, there were only seven years left. Now, remember God had wanted to work through the Jewish nation to do the work that needed to be, to be done. And when Jesus came, I've talked about this before, when Jesus came, the first three and a half years of his ministry was dedicated to trying to reach the leaders of the nation at that time to get them to accept him that he might be able to work through them and finish his work. But the prophet tells us in Acts of the Apostles that the leaders had signally failed of fulfilling their duty to the people and God chose others to do the work that the leaders had failed to do. Now, so God chose John to do a special work and he bypassed everybody else and got John to do a work that will prepare the people to accept the Messiah. Let's, get, let's go back to our screen now. She says that the Lord gave him his message. Men didn't give him this message. The Lord gave him his message. Now, she, now the prophet asks a question. She says, she says, did he go to the priests and rulers and ask if he might proclaim this message? Did John go to the priests and rulers and ask, can I do this? And then she, she, then she answers her own question. Look what she says. She says, no. God put him away from them that he might not be influenced by their spirit and teachings. He was the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. The mouth of the Lord have spoken it, brothers and sisters. It's time to finish the work. We are on the banks of the Jordan. It is time to finish the work. Let's continue. She says, this is the very message that must be given to our people. The message that God gave, that John the Baptist gave in that day is the very message that must be given today, saints. It is the very message that must be given. She says, we are near the end of time, and the message is clear the king's highway, gather out the stones, raise up a standard for the people. The people must be awakened. It is no time now to cry peace and safety. Brothers and sisters, it is no time now to cry peace and safety. We are at the very in, and as we continue in these studies, I believe you will see as never before that we are at the very end. Our camp meeting, the theme for our camp meeting this year, August the 7th through the 12th, is a time, uh, the time to finish the work. And I'm just encouraging you to hurry up and, and, and make your call in the election sure that you're there. Let me, let's continue now. She says, the people must be awakened. It is no time now to cry peace and safety. We are exhorted to cry aloud. Spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. That's what time it is, saying. Continue on. In the natural order of things, the son of Zacharias would have been educated for the priesthood. But the training of the rabbinical schools would have unfitted him for his work. The training of the rabbinical schools would have unfitted him for his work. 
God did not send him to the teachers of theology to learn how to interpret the scriptures. He called him to the desert that he might learn of nature and nature's God. So here again we see, brothers and sisters, that the work that John had to do, the schools of his day would have unfitted him to do the work. I have to say, saints, I have to say, and I say it as nice as I know how, the schools of today, our day, will unfit a person to do the work that has to be done. Now, as, I, as we continue studying, you will see that indeed, I hate to say this, but it's a fact. Our schools today that teaches theology will unfit you to do the work that has to be done at the end. Now, that's a bold statement, but I'm, I, by the grace of God, because we see Satan has infiltrated our educational system, brothers and sisters. And she says that we must break every yoke. We must understand the science of true education. And she says that if we will have a place in the plan of God, that we must break every yoke, brothers and sisters. And so today, our schools will unfit a person to do the work that God would have to be done at this time. And I'm sorry I have to say this, but I have to be honest. The schools of theology today, as you, as you will see as we continue on, saints, I'm, I'm sorry, but I just, this is the truth. This is the truth. She says, he called them to the desert that he might learn of nature, and nature's God, desire of ages, 101, 103. All right? The prophet continues. And uh, what we're talking about here, we're talking about finishing the work. We have looked at the fact that John the Baptist was a type of Elijah that God was sent just before the second coming. And he is a type. We've, we have found out that Elijah was to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. We need to understand what does it mean to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers. Because this is the work of Elijah. And evidently, it, 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 it figures into the work that we will do at the end, uh, uh, that, uh, that, that figures into the, 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 is, is the fact that it is now time to finish the work, then something in turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, the children to the fathers, figures into this work that needs to be done here at the end. Are you with me, saints? Now, who will God use to finish this work? Why? Who and why? If that, the work has to be finished, who? will God use to finish his work? So look what she says there. This is not, listen, this is not me saying this. I'm simply reading what the prophet said. Listen, let's look at our screen. She says, we are made sad as we see in many places so much left undone that should be done. But the Lord will use in the accomplishment of his work means that we do not now see. He will raise up from among the common people men and women to do his work. Even as of old, he called fishermen to be his disciples. So as of old, God called fishermen to be his disciples, and what we see here is that she's saying just what God did of old, the people that he used to finish his work, he would again do again. Let's continue from my screen. There will soon be an awakening that will surprise many. Those who do not realize the necessity of what is to be done will be passed by. So that tells me that we need to understand what is the work that need to be done. Those who do not realize the necessity of what is to be done will be passed by, and the heavenly messengers will work with those who are called the common people, fitting them to carry their truth to many places. Now is the time for us to awake and to do what we can. Continue on, continue on. Question, what is this awakening and what is to be done? She says, the days are fast approaching when there will be great perplexity and confusion. Satan, clothed in angels' robes, will deceive, if possible, the very 
elect. Brothers and sisters, the prophet is here telling us that the time is coming when Satan will deceive the very elect. That should be scary to anyone that is living in these times in which we live. It should, be, it, it, should, it should make us run to Jesus like we've never ran to him before. Satan will deceive a possible the very elect. The very elect. Look what she says. There will be God's many and Lord's many. Every wind of doctrine will be blowing. I can tell you right now, saints, I can tell you right now, among us as a people, every wind of doctrine is blowing. Every wind of doctrine is blowing. And, and later on, we, we, we're actually going to get into these winds of doctrine that's blowing, that Satan is, 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 is pushing, even at people that are supposed to be in present truth, pushing at people to get them confused as to what we really need to be doing. Unless we understand the work, saints, we are, we are set up to be deceived. Unless we understand what the work is, we are set up. We're getting caught up in all kinds of tangents today, saints. Look at this thing. Every wind of doctrine will be blown. Those who have rendered supreme homage to science, falsely so-called, will not be the leaders then. Those who have trusted to intellect, Genius of talent will not then stand at the head of rank and file. They did not keep pace with the light. Those who have proved themselves unfaithful will not then be entrusted with the flock. In the last solemn work, few great men will be engaged. They are self-sufficient, independent of God, and he cannot use them. Now, saints, this is not my words. But God says in this final work, few great men will be used. It says they are independent of God and he cannot use them. He must use the common people. He must use people who have not had their minds uh, uh, um, hypnotized with science, falsely so-called. And I, I'm going to really, we must understand this today, brothers and sisters. We must understand this today. There, saints, we are now living under the last drops of the early rain. The, the, we will move from the early rain to the latter rain at the passing of the sun of all. We are living under the last drops, and we must perfect our characters under this last drops of the early rain. We will perfect our characters today. And we are living under the very last drops. Now, I want you to understand something, please. It, it, you know, it's some, the truth is hard. But it's at such a critical time as this, as, 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 as John the Baptist preached, we have to preach. As John the Baptist told it, we have to tell it. And, and we must cry aloud and spare now. We must lift up our voice like a trumpet. We must show our people that transgression. I, I encourage you to go and read Desire of Ages, starting on page 610 over to 612. It's called Woe on the Pharisees. And it's, it was the last day of Jesus preaching there and teaching there in the temple. And he says, of all the things he'd done, he said there was still one work that needed to be done. It says that people were enslaved by the traditions of the priests and leaders at that time. And it goes on and talking about it. And it says, Jesus says, these chains Christ must break. Brothers and sisters, there are some chains that need to be broken that God can use us to do the work that he would have us to do. There are some chains that need to be broken. Go and read Woe on the Pharisees, Desire of Ages, page 610 to 612. About on page 611, you'll see the point that, that what she talks about, what Jesus said, these chains Christ must break. Saints, in the upper room, now we know, maybe I'm about to get in trouble, but we know that in the upper room, even though Nicodemus had, had come to Jesus by night and he saw that who Jesus was, but he was not in the upper room. He did not, when, on the day of Pentecost, he wasn't in the upper room. Gamaliel wasn't in the upper room. Even Joseph of Arimathea, who, took, who brought, took down the body, was not in the upper room. The Bible doesn't give any clue of that, nor does the spirit of prophecy. None of these people were in the upper room. Now, but the common people that was there in the upper room, brothers and sisters. Now, let, let's, let's go to, let's just go, I want, I want us to look at some here, saints. I want us to look at some. 
Look what it says here. I'm in.